Finally, Shamrock says, bro, if you don't leave me the F alone, I am going to take you down to that floor, to that floor in three seconds. And I promise you, you're going to be crying. Bro, all the boys are there. This is catering. Oh, they're probably like, oh. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, go broing down memory lane with the WWE and UFC merger. What was it like for Vince Russo to work with the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, the yeah. beast Dan Severin, who had some killer theme music in WWF, by the way, and uh, the lethal weapon, Steve Blackman. Very gory oh. uh, nicknames for these uh, for these shoot fighters. Dude, Steve Blackman <laughs> rules, man. Very so. nice. Steve Blackman has some pretty good theme song music uh, as well, like the second version. Remember the second? Yeah. The yeah, yeah. I like theme music, man. Vince mm-hmm. Russo, what did you have to do with any? Did you have anything to do with that theme music back in the day? Oh, no, not theme music. That was the great Jim Johnson, man. That's my, yeah. That was yeah, all yeah. Jim, bro. 1,000% yeah. all Jim. He is missed. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he is a mess. Bro, you know, I, I, I say this all the time, and I mean this, bro. I, Bro, I swear to this day, and, you know, you know, bro, for my, uh, um, for my Patreon, I, I go back and I watch the Attitude Era every two weeks. I review the show. Bro, I swear to me, nobody, I, definitely nobody I ever worked with, but I don't think anybody I've ever seen in wrestling, bro, nobody was more believable for, than Ken Shamrock. Mm-hmm. He was just so freaking believable bro you know how chris a, a lot of times we'll get on them with the egg beaters and all this no nothing ever looked fake nothing bro and then the the intensity he had with every promo yeah. i'm talking about you know those those the the veins would come popping yeah. out of his neck he would turn yeah. red <laughs> yeah I, I mean you know oh my gosh bro this guy was so intense and so believable and bro i know he dabbled in wrestling a little bit then he went to ufc then he came to the wwe bro that guy picked up wrestling like that mm-hmm. i never saw anybody come from the ufc and pick it up as quickly and as good as he did he was he was phenomenal, bro. Shamrock ruled. I was going to ask you who picked it up the most, and it's probably obviously Shamrock. I mean, Severin Severin was NWA champion. Like I'll be. He right. was. He's he like was. I think he's like the longest reigning NWA yeah. champion ever because he didn't defend it for like a long time. I remember back in my parents' house again. Another story. I remember being back at my parents' house getting the UFC fight DVDs, the best of when it just kind of mm-hmm. was like underground and started coming out. Yeah, the Gracies. Yeah, Gracie. Like why they they got this Guillaume look at him? He looks like an idiot. Good yeah, joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Little karate uniform. I look at him. God, I'm like, oh yep. my god. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. We do these little scuffles in my living room. Me and the boys. They'd be submission only fights. Yep, I would do that. I would do the same thing too. Just you submission only I mean? fights. Yeah. yeah. I would use wrestling moves, and I'd I'd win majority of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's the- would- that was one of the things when I was, you know, when I was a, a teens, just, I mean, I was a street fight. Like I, you know, I, I, I did train for MMA, but I mean, like talking about fighting stuff, watching wrestling and UFC made me a pretty daggone good fighter because yeah. of just that. I'm and just knowing how to just make people like just tap and just yeah. squeal and stuff. Yeah. I am undefeated in street fights and legitimate altercations. Very nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe. <clears throat> Maybe I lost by DQ when the guy hit me with a beer bottle back in the day, but, you know, who's yeah. the same? That'll do it, yeah. So, like, what was Steve Blackman missing, though? A personal, think- personality. Yeah, charisma. And, and, bro, that was the problem. That that was the problem, bro. You got to understand, he was, the, he was there the same time as Shamrock. Mm-hmm. So they pretty much had, like, the same gimmick, but because Shamrock was so good on the mic... Mm-hmm. That kind of left Blackman behind a little bit. You know what I mean? That yeah. that that really was the issue. Steve Blackman was a Derek Bateman favorite. If we harken back to the days of NXT season four, Daniel Bryan and Derek Bateman, we love Steve Blackman. We still right. do. 
Yeah. It came to the point where it was another EC3 story. Sit down on my lap, young and I got some things to tell you. I'm at this gym. This is like mid EC3 push initially. So I'm like kind of getting a name back in wrestling, I'm kind of becoming popular. I'm at this gym in Western Pennsylvania. My buddy comes up to me and goes, dude, I think Steve Blackman's here. And this is after Derek Bateman had the whole run of like, you know, I'm the next Steve Blackman. Legitimately loved him, but like just, you know, it was humorous. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to go say hi. I got to take a picture. And I took a couple steps. And I remember one agent, I did a, a Steve Blackman quip. And one of the agents goes, he better never see you. He's going to kick your ass. I'm like, so I stop. I'm like, oh my God, what if I meet Steve Blackman and he beats my ass? <laughs> so then I'm like, oh my God, I'm thinking about it. And my buddy's like, you want to go say hi? I'm like, you know, I don't want to bug him during his workout. I'll catch him afterwards. You know, 15 minutes, I, I finally muster the courage. Like I'm trying to talk to the hot girl. Finally got it. I'm like, I'm going to go talk to Steve Blackman. Go back into that freeway room. He was gone, gone forever. And I missed. Oh, wow. You missed the opportunity, man. You, you miss, you know, 100% of the shots you don't take. So, yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah. So it's interesting because I'm going to ask you a question, uh, Vince, here about uh, Blackman. But, uh, you know, you're a booker uh, or, or a writer, a head writer, Vince. So you have writing stories. As a wrestler, EC3 uh, has wrestler stories. As a journalist, I have journalist stories uh, about. Uh, we're so good together. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, years ago, some some years ago, I don't know if y'all know what Blackman does to help, but he's like a bell bondsman in Pennsylvania. So like, yeah. it's like a real life dog, the bounty hunter. Why is there not a camera following this? <laughs> it's just true. Um, so I, I love just interviewing people that people don't interview all the time. That's that was one of my sticks, you know, as being a journalist for so long. I just love interviewing people. I was like, oh yeah, I wonder what Steve Black was doing now, and they usually you know google him and see my interview with him and so uh i was trying to get his information i got his information i know a lot of wrestlers so i got his information and uh so i called him late at night and we we agreed to an interview we talked a couple a couple times we agreed to an interview and so he worked like late at night like his bell bondsman work was like super late at night he wasn't yeah. a Bell Bosman. He's Batman. <laughs> he's, 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 he's nocturnal, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but he, but I called him, and so he, you know, he was really cool. I, you know, I talked to him on the phone. He talked to people on the phone, of course, just kind of go through the things before the interview. And I talked to him that week, and we were scheduled for Pancakes and Power Slams. So eleven o'clock Tuesday comes around. I'm like getting heated because, like, you know, I'm trying to get his trying to get him on the line, trying to call him, trying to call him, trying to call him, trying to call him. And he's texting me like, I'm so sorry, man. I'm still at work. I still got this, you know, this, uh, this project, blah, blah. And so I'm heated. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I can't miss, I can't stand missing an interview, a week of missing an interview. Cause that's what I promised to my, my audience is that every week when I was pancakes, probably saying I would get an interview every single week with a wrestler. And so I was calling people, calling people, calling people, and uh so brian cage and i'm calling brian cage because he's in california so it was the three hour difference and so brian cage is driving he's like yeah i'll do it so he ends up going on the show and so black what's that again i tuned in for steve blackman and got brian cage man yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm never gonna watch you again <laughs> and so um Basically, Blackman calls me in the morning and he's like super apologetic, man. I was like, he's like, man, I'm so sorry, man. I was still at work. I was like, man, it's cool, man. It happens. Just, you know, <clears throat> go ahead and send me a video of an apology. You know what I mean? Just, just do some type of audio. Just, you know, you were promised to my fans and you weren't able to come. So he did it, man. He was, you know, he, he was super cool. He was super, you know, compliant. He had an apology video. And he ended up coming on my show, uh, you know, some weeks later. And I'm one of the only shows that he did, man, because he, awesome. so, he felt so bad about, yeah. you know, standing me up, not intensely, that he did my show. And I don't think he's done a podcast since, man. So, yeah, it was pretty. We, cool. we should bring him on. I'd be all for it, man. I'll, I'll be all for it. He's, he's still, I mean, I still have his number. You know, he's, he's still doing his thing. He, he was the real he, deal, bro. I mean, he was, he would kill you. He, like, yeah. he, like, bro, he would kill you with his bare hands. Yeah. yeah. Too, like, being the up and coming young body guy, you know, all the WWF superstars. And, 
I want to look like this guy. I want to look like this guy. I'm like, Steve Blackman, he doesn't tan. He's not popping on like a bunch of baby oil. Yeah. Like, he look he looks the best. Like yeah. he's just I could just see him put on those little black pants, grabbing his kendo stick and just walking out there like his <laughs> mind eight. He's walking like he walks in at seven fifty eight. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I already had a shoot fight with uh, Big Show and uh, kind of got I, the upper hand with you. I was there, there bro. What I happened, was there, man? man. I swear. Bro, you, you know, you know, one that you, bro, did this ever happen to you where, like, bro, I, I think this happened, but I could have built this up in my head over the years, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the Mandela effect is what it's called. Bro, that's what happened with me. However, a couple of years ago, I saw Kenny, and I'm like, bro, I got to ask you this, because I swear I was there. I said, did this happen? He goes, yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, that definitely happened. Bro, what it was was, I'll, I'll, and it, he confirmed it, so I'm not making this up. But it was so unbelievable, I thought it was like a dream. We're in the cafeteria. Big shows just needling Shamrock. Oh, world's most toughest man in catering. World's uh, most toughest man. World. man. And bro, Kenny, he don't have that kind of sense of humor. I, bro, I'll never forget, I was standing next to him. I think I told you this, Chris. I was standing next to him when he was in the program with Rock. And Rock's cutting a promo. Rock's cutting a promo. And Kenny's watching the promo because the promo was a- aimed at him. And about 10 seconds after Rock delivers the line, like 10 seconds after the fact, bro, he turns to me and he goes, did he just say I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer? So, like, Kenny didn't have that sense of humor. So, <laughs> shows needling him, needling him, and he's like... Oh, he's dealing with Shamrock? Yeah, Shamrock. Oh, I thought, I thought Blackman got in the shit. No, no, no. Oh, and Sh- oh, Shamrock? Shamrock? Oh, yeah, and Shamrock says, ha, ha, ha. Finally, Shamrock says, bro, if you don't leave me the F alone, I am going to take you down to that, floor, to that floor in three seconds and I promise you, you're going to be crying. Bro, all the boys are there. This is catering. Oh, they're probably like, oh. Yeah, egging it on. <laughs> Bro, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Oh. Big show continued. I don't know what he did. Next thing I know, he's in the legit ankle lock. He's in the oh, legit no. ankle lock screaming in catering. And that was, yes, confirmed by Shamrock. That did happen, yes. Wow. There you yeah, go. Bro, those guys, even like Tank Abbott, bro, those guys would like kill you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Tank yes. Abbott's a nice guy, too. I've talked yeah. about oh, I met Ken for the first time. It was at the, uh, when I did the brief thing with Impact in 2020 in pandemic time. Looked amazing. Cool yeah. as hell. Like, just, just easy to talk to. And I didn't needle him because I know I don't want to get my... <laughs> bro this is a guy though legit this is legitimately bro he was living in cars at 13 14 years old mm-hmm. he got handed off bro from forced to home to forced to mm-hmm. home i mean that was his upbringing like he literally was on the streets yeah so he- that's why for him it was like you know this was survival bro this yeah, was yeah, yeah. Him and Frank were adopted brothers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, you adopt two different, I mean, gene pools, I guess, two different genetics, and they both turn out to be just ass kicking. Yeah, two fighters. Yeah. <laughs> both of them. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, um, I, I, I did. I, I did hear the Blackman got into a, a fight with uh, Big Show too. Yeah, so that I don't know about that. I, I'll, I'll be. Know. I'll be interested to know about that. So. I didn't know about Shamrock. I didn't yeah. hear about Blackman. So if Shamrock and Blackman both, you know, uh, was able to uh, mm-hmm. over <laughs> and basically beat up <laughs> the big show, that's, don't mess with shoe fighters. Maybe no, Paul's bro. Keep his mouth shut. Yeah, yeah. You maybe, know? maybe he's man, trying. bro. I swear, I was just watching an episode of uh, Attitude Era, man, and it's it's about two weeks before WrestleMania. And, you know, Shamrock's got the, uh, you know, ankle lock on on somebody. I don't remember who he was. Bro, The Rock. Oh, the chair with, with the chair. Oof. Straight away yeah. as hard as he could. And, bro, he uh, 
Shamrock immediately started bleeding from his temple, and I was like, oh, my God, bro. Like, was that planned? Was yeah, that shot so planned? Planned that, like, Shamrock's like, you better hit me with that. And Rock's like, man, not like that. I don't know. He's like, you better hit me. So, All right. Like, <sighs> was that, that planned, was, Vince? What do you mean? The chair shot? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it was. That, that way? The way that he did it like that? Funny, though. Bro, that was that that was with Mick and remember Mick and Rock? Yeah, that I was, was, Mick, that was yeah. Mick saying hit me, yeah. hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, bro. Yeah, at least at least there was like I mean, because it was like over the head a lot with with the Mick. Oh and yeah, me. no, this was but boom, like bro, yeah, like that. Kent had no defense, uh, bro. And it, it was, was just a straight boom. Oh, like it was brutal. Oh, I, I, concussion I cut that picture out of a wrestling magazine and hung it in my locker. Yeah, sheesh. <sighs> Uh, real quick, uh, speaking about Blackman again, is that the reason why Head Cheese was formed? Because to to, to boost up Blackman's charisma? Because that was definitely the most charismatic he was during that time. I don't think I, I was. I don't think I don't think I was there for that, bro. You weren't there for Head Cheese. I don't think was, so. What year was Head Cheese? Was, right? that, not, was that two? That was two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was right after. Yes. Yeah. So who who took over in two thousand after you left? You remember? I think, that? Uh, Ger- Gerwick, I think. Uh, was it Gertz? Oh, no, it was some other guy that passed away. Oh, okay. It was some other guy that people loved that said he was great, and then the, the dude passed away. From- oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Head Cheese. Yeah, Head Cheese was 2000. And, uh, yeah, so it was a little bit after your time. I think that that was probably one of the B- Blackman's best times in the WWE, and it's really showed his charisma, too. Oh, dude. Why, like the jump with the Shane match. Yeah. And the yeah. Elbow drop into the kind of pad, but. Yeah. Just keep rolling, man.